we're talking with Dr. Cheryl Selman, author of What Mothers Need to Know to Protect Their Daughters from Breast Cancer. I would like to expand that to say what mothers and fathers and educators and public officials need to know. Um, I wonder if you can give me some idea. You, you mentioned that precocious puberty is a major problem. It starts with young women sometimes that are eight years old, uh, six years old. Uh, it affects young men. Um, why, what do you attribute this to? Is something going on in our society or environment? Um, what, what, what's the precursor or why are we having these problems? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that if, um, you know, if a family goes to a doctor seeing this condition in their children, the doctor will most likely say, we don't know why this is happening. But there are some known causes that have been attributed to this early development, uh, you know, kind of pushing puberty into these young children in early age. So let's go look at some of the things. Well, first of all, we are well aware that there are chemicals in our environment that are called hormone mimics. These are estrogenic chemicals that actually can go right through the placental barrier and enter the womb. And many of these chemicals that have hormone disrupting effects can alter the development of the fetus, can either cause reproductive abnormalities while still developing in the womb, or can predispose these children to be highly sensitive to these chemicals and to um, kind of stimulating estrogen levels uh, when they're out of the womb and, and developing, you know, in, in critical times. So these hormone mimics actually can fuel the uh, you know, early development, cause aberrations, cause genetic issues, can, can alter things. So we are surrounded in a sea of these hormones that are stimulating and pushing us to have high levels of, of these hormone disrupting chemicals in our bodies. In fact, what we need to appreciate is that there is no longer a child born in the United States that doesn't have synthetic chemicals in their bodies. With 247, isn't that what the average is? There, there was a study that looked at the cord blood, the umbilical blood of newborns, and they found an average of 200 and something synthetic chemicals in the blood of newborns. So these newborns are swimming in a sea of a toxic soup in the womb that are programming us in many ways, and particularly they're programming our, our reproductive nature and our hormonal nature while we're still in the womb. You know, we need to remember that a female fetus has all the eggs that she will ever have to produce her children. So we, in fact, have three I'm sorry, gener- repeat that, please. Okay, so if a woman is pregnant with a, with a female fetus, you know, you have a baby in the yes, womb, yes. that baby has a full complement of all the eggs she will ever have. So in a sense, a pregnant woman with a daughter has, there are three generations of women living in that pregnant woman. Three generations, the pregnant woman, her daughter, and these future, these eggs, okay? So, in fact, there are studies showing us that exposure to some chemicals such as bisphenol A, and bisphenol A is a synthetic estrogen. It's a very potent uh, estrogenic chemical. Bisphenol A is put into plastics. Bisphenol A is found in plastic water bottles, for instance. It is the plastic lining of tin cans. This, this leaches into the water, into the foods. At, uh, we, have no, we have found, studies have found that bisphenol A is a potent hormone mimic at a million times less than what is considered a danger by the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. A million times or more, more powerful, minute, minute amounts are hormone disruptors and have been, this, these, this type of chemical, has been associated with developing precocious puberty. So, you know, creating these hormonal levels, with creating infertility problems, with creating a predisposition to uh, fibroids, to ovarian cysts, to uh, a range of hormonal issues. So, so we're finding that, first of all, the chemicals in the environment are a, a major role. And then we have to look at diet. And when we look at our diet, we're looking at things that, first of all, 
uh, if it's not organic food, it's been sprayed with chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Hundreds of these chemicals are hormone mimics. So we are further exacerbating this hormonal overload and pushing this tendency in our children from all these hormone mimics. Many of them are estrogen mimics. Are there any other examples in, of other species that are being involved or affected by these things? We do have examples in, in, the, you know, in the world of nature that have been the harbingers of this problem. We see, uh, for example, uh, fish in rivers throughout the world that are actually being affected by hormone-disrupting chemicals in the water. And what we're finding is that male fish are now becoming female, becoming feminized. They are actually developing eggs and producing eggs. So we're changing the, we're gender bending these animals. We have seen it in mammals. We have seen uh, reproductive abnormalities and all sorts of mammals that we've been investigating. The frogs are showing this. I mean, our, our natural world is reflecting back what's happening. You know, something we don't ever think about, but we are taking you know, billions of prescriptions of pharmaceutical drugs, everything from birth control pills, HRT, cholesterol-lowering drugs, you know, we're taking chemotherapy, we're taking, you know, you name it, we're taking all these pharmaceutical drugs, and where do they go? So we kind of, you know, pee them out, you know, and where do they go then? They go into our sewage system, which is incapable of removing the metabolites of these pharmaceuticals. They get into our water system, and they come back into our drinking supply and we literally have chemicals on tap where we now know there are studies showing that um, there are chemicals coming out of you know our tap water that are minute amounts of these pharmaceuticals but we don't need a lot to be having effects and so we are just surrounded until we can clean up our environment or at least take control of our own personal environment we've got to filter our water. We, it, it's imperative we eat organically. It's imperative that we remove household cleaning products and personal care products that have ingredients in them that are known to be hormone disruptors that get absorbed. All of these things are driving this trend to upset and compromise hormonal development of the most vulnerable of us, which are our children. So what women must know to protect their daughters is also a call to action, I would suppose, for anyone that reads it, and you don't have to have a daughter. You just have to be concerned about who's going to be taking care of you 25 years from now, as opposed to you having to take care of them at 70 or 80 years old. It is definitely a call to action. We must wake up for the sake of our children. You know, the title has, you know, we must know to protect our daughters from breast cancer. First of all, males are getting breast cancer too, but these issues that are affecting little girls are affecting little boys, it's affecting our children. The, the information in this book is really most relevant for parents to have to protect their children. And also, you know, it, it's a wake-up call, but more than that, it, it's, a, it's a manual, it's a, it's, a, it's a roadmap of the steps we can start taking right now to make the changes and support the health of our children and future generations. Thank you, Dr. Stillman. You are an ideal example of the kind of people that are helping us change our attitude towards health care, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you.